you can quickly just deactivate the effects just to see the difference they're making. That's our original sound. That's our new sound. We could add a third effect. Delay is always good. See, what I've done there is I've inadvertently drawn in some modulation of the delay time. Now, that's an interesting thing to do. I didn't actually mean to do that, but I accidentally hit the modulation allocation area around the outside of the dial instead of the dial itself. So I can get rid of that by removing modulation. But having done it accidentally, it's quite nice, actually. I mean, if I draw in some uh, modulation from graph one from the last tutorial into delay time, I'm, what I'm doing is actually animating the amount of delay time, the resolution of the delay, rather, that is applied over time. which is pretty cool. Switch the mix up a bit. So that gives it a really interesting dynamic sort of effect. And what I've done there is I've applied some graph modulation to the uh, timing of that delay. I can remove that. Actually, I'm going to leave it in because that sounds really quite cool. Of course, the delay is synced to the rest of the project. You can dial in master presets, which contain one, two, or three preset up effects. Which is quite nice. Destruction, uh, reverbs. Wow, I mean, some of these completely change the sound. And of course, you get a wet and dry mix. So that's synth effects per engine. You also get master effects, which affect the whole output of the plugin. Now, you might not necessarily want to put anything too extreme on this because it will process everything that comes through it. Uh, so you might want to use dynamics such as stereo, maybe a channel compressor, or in, as in this case, a bus compressor. And uh, you can limit output. And you can add up to three of those, and there are presets for those as well. Some useful stuff, downsampling. And some extreme stuff. So that's effects. In the next tutorial, we're going to go and look at the transmod system.